Welcome to Sustainable Leadership Live. I have the spectacular Samantha Buckley Hugeson with me today. Samantha, so thanks so much for joining us. Super happy to be here. How much fun this is going to be? Such an amazing topic. I know you and I could go on for it hours talking about it. Uh, and I'm really excited to hear what you have to say and some tips and tools for people. But before we jump in, I'd really like to share just a little bit about Samantha. Sam is a master certified life coach, and she's also a best selling author of Unstuck Yourself. Definitely get the book, it's phenomenal. She needs help to identify, excuse me, she helps people to identify and expand their unique gifts in the world. And I will say a side note, we all have unique gifts. Sam's deep belief is that life is meant to be fun. She's passionate about helping people design and live lives they love. So let's jump right in and have you share your brilliance. Thank you. Yeah. I'm happy to share my brilliance. <laughs> so how do we design? I mean, we so many of us are living by default. We'll get to it here. We'll get to it when that happens. How do we even start to look at designing a life that we truly love and not putting it on the back burner? You have to decide for it. Yeah. So that's another word. That's a word. If you get to know me, and you're getting to know me, is decide is such a powerful word. Don't try, don't, oh, that'd be nice, whatever, make a decision and, and then stick with it. And so many people are afraid of the commitment of making a decision. The truth is, if it's not working, then you can make another decision. You know, that's it. Yeah. You just, you know, decide, I, I want more. And, and I write this all through the book, let go of the how. I know that sounds Thank weird, you. right? But it sounds yeah. weird. It's like, well, you're telling me that I can design life I love, but you're telling me not to figure out how I can do that. Mm. Start with what? What would you love? Mm. Because when we say how, gosh, how would I do that? It's kind of like energetically, we're at a loss. Yeah, we're at a loss. Where you say, okay, so if I really wanted to be, have experience, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. What's the thing I could do? What's the thing I could do in the direction of that today? Right? So, and it applies to everything. If I wanted to have more money, if I wanted to have better health, if I wanted to mm -hmm. make the love of my life, if I wanted to, what's a thing? Just anything in the direction of that. And as you move, things start laying themselves in your right. hand. If it's meant for you, and usually it's meant for you. I love that you started with don't get caught up in the how. And I think so many of us can do that because we're looking at the gap. We're looking at here we are. Here's where we need to go. Forget it. Right. I, I can't even I can't even think about it. So that right there is just such an absolute gem. Donna Cravata is in the house with us. Thanks so much for joining us, Donna. She is phenomenal. Nice. Hi, Donna. <laughs> so pause look at what do you really want and start designing now that sounds really simple yeah but not easy right, right. can you talk a little bit about that yeah i just love that you say that <laughs> simple not easy yeah simple put on your shoes and run the race not easy <laughs> you haven't worked out for a while okay so it actually is easier. The, the, the amount of time that we spend procrastinating and stuck in the how. <laughs> Hallelujah. We could have been there by then. And so mm -hmm. imperfectly, this is, I tell my clients this all the time, but I find that most of my clients, of course, I'm a coach, right? So most of my clients, their life is pretty good. We're, we're up leveling to great. Or, you know, if you have four cylinders in the car, Let's say one is your time freedom and your money freedom, and one is your your love and your relationships, your health and well-being, and your career and creative expression, right? Typically, my clients have a couple of them that are doing great, and then a couple of those cylinders just are not firing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just a matter of do it imperfectly. It, you know, come on. We're, people are not watching us. People are not watching to see, wait for us to screw up. And if they're yeah. waiting for you to screw up, they're not your people. So 
I, perfection, we can totally get stuck in perfection. And Donna is saying she absolutely loves, you know, loves the show. You have so much to bring to the table, uh, Sam. It is absolutely impressive. And per perfection, that has got to be one of the main reasons why we don't go. How do I do it? I can't be perfect. I'm not really sure. One of the quotes that I love, and I can't remember who said it, is progress over perfection because perfection gets in the way of possible. Right? I never heard that one, by the way. Thank you for sharing. Good one, though, isn't it? <laughs> Do it imperfectly. Lean in. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what lean in really means. Yeah. You know, we've all heard the quotes or whatever. Do it afraid. Lean in. Da 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 da. It, they're true. Mm -hmm. Get over yourself. I get. I make a fool of myself all the time, and I'm perfectly happy. <laughs> yeah. What is? Wait a minute. What is your tagline? I know we have very similar taglines. Oh. The guide to designing the life you love. So it's really, it's really about you know step by step. So this is kind of a workbook. If it's funny when people um, do this book and then I talk to them, they're like, "Yeah, I stopped at chapter three because that's where the work begins. You don't read <laughs> age kids, right? You know, come on now, <laughs> come on. <laughs> it takes a little bit of work. And anything that we want takes work but i also believe that that's a perspective as well right when we can really connect to that life that we love the goals that we want to achieve we can come at it when we are intentional right when we pause when we're not looking for perfection right just to like, really start moving yeah, through and thinking of it from a different angle yeah go have some fun and design your life stop living by default you open that up perfectly you're, you're going to live one of two ways as long as you're breathing you can live by design or you can live mm -hmm. by default that, you know, it's life happening to you or through you. How do you want to do it? And, and I believe there are times that we tend to fall back, even if we are living a life by design, if we are incredibly intentional, there are things that can trigger us to fall back to default. Those yeah. it's, it's, it's comfortable. It's the well-known in it's uncomfortable stepping out into a newer place. Well, and then to identify that, that your mind says, well, that's not a healthy, good place, but you're, you're, being says, yeah, but I've been there for a long time, so I'd like to retreat back to that. Yeah. Um, it's paradigms. Paradigms are sneaky little, you know what? Talk to a little bit about paradigms. Can you just explain it a little bit further in case people don't fully understand what they mean? I've done the studies and, and whatnot on it, but it's a I word that- wiser than me, because I just think of them as habits and and thoughts and feelings and, and subconscious, and they're just sneaky little mm -hmm. things that will throw themselves in your pack <laughs> and they, yeah. And they'll try and grab you and pull you back and lure you into your old way of being, you know, um, it's, it's the gap. You mentioned it earlier when we were talking paradigms are just living in the gap. Oh, and so, they can really grab you by the ankles and right. you don't even know it. I think often we think of it as just the way that, we are just the way things are. They're sneaky. And that's why I tell people when I start working with a client, I tell them, I said, there's, there, we're going to hit a gap. You have a choice. You can either go right over the bridge doo, 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 and just <laughs> the fun, or you're going to decide that you're going to go down the gully and across the rocks and the river and you're going to claw back up the other side. Stay with it. You'll make it to the other side. But that's it. You're going to hit a gap. It, it happens to everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone. If you're going to transform your life, you're going to hit a gap. And I think it's really important to, and this sounds opposite to what we're really talking about, but actually looking back. When we're looking forward, we can see the gap. But when we're looking back, we can actually see the gain of where we've come from, of how much success that we have. So often we don't pause to really soak in and really anchor the learnings and anchor the success and anchor the, the growth that we've had. So I think I, I would love for you to sort of talk a little bit about that of looking back and saying, wow, I've gone this far. Mm -hmm. I don't think natural. that naturally any one of us would ever do that. Mm -hmm. Not naturally. Like, like no. your thing is it, it, you would need a mentor or a coach or someone to pause and say, let's look at your successes because you're focused on your lack. Mm -hmm. So I do an exercise uh, when I speak publicly of, and it's really fun because I have people close their eyes and I said, think about a time in life where you were just super successful. 
I don't care if it's when you got your letterman's jacket. Uh, you know what I mean? In high school or college. I don't mm -hmm. know if it was whatever it was. But I want you to put that on. Put it on. And it's amazing to watch people. And I always tell them, you have to close your eyes because like, my eyes will be open and I can tell if you're cheating. <laughs> it's amazing to watch people's faces literally change. Mm -hmm. The smiles and the lightness come up. It's like put on the success. You've had many in your life. Stop trying to qualify them as good enough or not good enough. You've had crap happen in the past and you've had good times since. So we acknowledge that. We go, okay, that's what that was. That past thing was... It was good. It's all good, by the way. It's so important to anchor the learning. We can always anchor the failures. We can always anchor when we've screwed up or made an ass of ourselves, right? We can pull those emotions up in a moment, but we don't always anchor the positive, the successes, whatever success is to each individual, not what right. society deems as success. Right. We, so it's so important to anchor. We tend to put ourselves down. Yeah. They're not enoughness, especially as women. I'm going to say that women, we tend to uh, not want to be braggadocious or too big for our skin or what have you. And it's just total BS, guys. It's just play big, play a big game. Yeah. You, if you got to toot your horn, no one's really going to do it for you by any means. Now, I noticed something on your website about back to the future. Come back to the future. <laughs> so, the, I've got a couple chapters. One is uh, is the past is the past. Leave it there because we tend to bring it with us. You know what I mean? Our, like a ball and chain. Like our old stories. We just tend to keep replaying them. It's like, you know what? Leave it there. It's it's mm -hmm. It was a gift. Stop bringing it with you. Come back to the future. When you're living in the past, in my, technically, you're going to get a bit depressed. Oh, it was this. We had that. Remember when? When you go too far in the future, which is going to be counterintuitive to what I teach, because I talk about living, designing your future. But anyway, get to that in a second. Um, we tend to get full of anxiety because the how comes into it when we're too far into the future. Right? So come back in the future, come to the present. And just decide, we're back to that word, for what you would love in your life. And then and then just just baby steps every day. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's really a little action every day. Action is the magic pill. What's a question that people could ask themselves, right? To 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 decide. I think we can go down that rabbit hole and we're so far down that we have a difficult time that when we have a habit or something that we can lean into when we're recognizing that we're we're stepping into that anxiety. Do you have a question? Do you have a statement or something that will help people pull back out of that? Well, one is be in the noticing. It's just like notice it. What what is this? I, I love the word what. I think I might add that with my decide. <laughs> um, I love the word what. Because if you're starting to feel anxious, you need to pause for a second. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming most of us are grown-ups here. We can take these tools and go, okay, what is this? What is this? If you listen, you're going to get an answer. There's number one. So true. Yeah, the voice of inspired instinct and, and inspiration is as loud as one's willing to listen. Right? So I've never asked a question I didn't get the answer eventually. So that's a tool. What is this? What's going on here? The other, the other thing is, is that if we're going to decide for a life you love, it's kind of a two-part question you just gave me there. So the other answer would be, you ask, what would I really love in this? What would I really love this to look like? And I don't know is never, ever acceptable. Ever. Well, what if you did know? You don't get to tell me I don't know. That's just your way of staying stuck. The book is called Unstuck. Unstuck. <laughs> you know, if you want to get stuck, ask how and answer I don't know. Mm -hmm. So. And I would imagine you get pushback when you say that. I know I do. Well, if you did know, what would you do? It, well, then I follow up with a question. Just give me a thing. Just a thing. Anything. Yeah. I like to think of it sort of as a hallway. You're going down a hallway. You can go down one door or you could go down and that might take you one place just to start playing and exploring. Like you said, it is so important to have fun. And we get so trapped in this box that just bringing in a little bit of play, um, being intentional and bringing fun into it 
it doesn't have to be so. You can just be creative and say the most wild thing, but that triggers something in your mind from the childhood of what you wanted and that you'd forgotten or disconnected from. Right. Well, it's fun. I mean, here's the thing. I think it goes all the way back again. We're doing a lot of coming back too, and, and mm. it, do it imperfectly. I swear, no one's watching, waiting for you to fail. They're not. I, I we're all very. And if they are, then there are people who. I mean, they're not your people. Th thank you. I was trying to say that eloquently. <laughs> they're not your people, and that's the thing is that you know, I, again, we're adults. We, we only have so many people that really are our people, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, the naysayers and the boo-hooers and the whatever, let them do their own journey. I think that comes back to what we were talking about in the green room, really those boundaries, really getting clear on the boundaries that are going to support us to make the choice that we want, right? To design the life that we want. Right. Yeah, that's perfect. It does go right back to work boundaries. So exciting. Yeah. Wow. So are there any um, books that you would recommend? Is, I know we've got your book, right? Absolutely. But like, oh, what are, so, <laughs> go buy that book, right? But I mean, more like what, what are some trainings that you've taken that have gotten you to this point? Because it's taken experience, it's taken knowledge for you to get here. Is there anything um, else that you could share? You know, I really, really hate the school of hard knocks, but it, a lot of my life experience, you know, I mean, we're the same age. Mm -hmm. We're old, which by the way is okay. <laughs> I'm <laughs> loving my age. I, I mean, like people say when I go, cause I'm old and I have a lot of experience and they go, you're not old. I go, no, you think that I think that's a bad thing. I think it's a great thing. <laughs> I, I've got plenty of life to live. You know, you're an elder. You're not elderly. You've got knowledge. Donald Cravato, who's on the show, introduced me to Chip Conley, who wrote a book about... Uh, you know, Chip Conley's my neighbor in Baja. No way! Hey, Love him. You and I just said that at the same time about Chip. Hey. <laughs> yep, yep. My dream house, he is to... His, the academy is two blocks. Not even two blocks, a block from Oh, you're kidding me. I've been wanting to go there. Okay. That'll be a, a, even one more reason why I go. Anyway, everyone check out Chip Conley as well. As as an elder, not elderly, we have a lot of wisdom that we can bring, that we bring to the table. Which goes back to the green room conversation when I tell you that I hired this 25-year-old. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, there's a system there, but I've got experience and you can't replace my experience. Yeah. So you asked me that. So it's experience. Of course, uh, you know, I was in the corporate and business world forever. Um, I am a professional coach, you know, I mean, all that stuff, everything I've done has been certified, blah, blah, blah. blah. So there's, there's the experience. It's the doing. I've been an active coach for 12 years now. So congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Donna just said, uh, ooh, because she it, she loves Chip Conley. Yeah. Really? Come on down, you guys. Come down. Yeah, come to yeah. Pescadero, not New Mexico. I'm not in the New Mexico one. Got <sighs> She's, Donna's been talking about it for a while. She wanted to go, um, I think, right before COVID. But that didn't happen. So, well, that, this has been absolutely fabulous. Believe it or not, we are just about at time, which always blows me away how fast this goes. I would love, is there any question that I did not ask you that you wish that I had or that you would have asked yourself? No, I don't think <laughs> we had a great time. I think you asked me really important, big questions that make me think this <laughs> early in the morning. <laughs> so I do have one more question for you, which is what one habit or skill set have you leaned into that helps you lead a more sustainable life? Develop a pimp. <laughs> Develop a what? A pimp. A powerful, <laughs> important morning practice. I'm like, what? That's okay. how people remember it. It's in the book. I um, love it. I, have, I haven't heard you talk about that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pimp is a powerful, important morning practice. Yes. And, and really, it, it'll change everything. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my best advice is if you only have one practice, do that. I'm with you. My morning practice actually starts the night before by laying out my yoga mat. So I have to put it away <laughs> if I'm not going to do it. You know, I used to sleep in my workout clothes. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. Okay. That is like 
Up and at him. If I did it, if I didn't, I'd make an excuse. Oh, I'll go later. No, you won't. Yeah. <laughs> if it works, don't question. Don't question. Right. So. Right. Awesome. Sam, thank you so much for showing up and sharing your brilliance with us today. Where can people reach out to you, connect with you? Um, I would say my website is the easiest and it's a designed life LLC LLC. Um, of course you can find me on all social media, Insta, Facebook, mm -hmm. but I'd love people. To and is it at design, a design life? What is the handle for the, your favorite uh, social platform for people to follow you? Um, I don't have a favorite. Okay. Come to my Facebook page. I mean, not my Facebook, come to my website. Cause then we can like talk in the yeah. newsletter and all that. And I have some fun goodies on it, free goodies and things like that. So you have a freebie. Do you, you want to mention it? So people can. Right, sort of... yeah. It's a, a 30 days from good to great. And it's just a, a drip that gives 30 days of inspiration and motivation and love and kindness and gentleness for one's soul. So there you go. Awesome. Perfect. Go there. So thank you everyone for joining us. If you're watching live, thank you. Thank you. If you're watching on the replay, thank you also for joining us and please type hashtag replay in the comments. If you have any questions for Sam, please pop them in there. She'll be sure to pop in and answer anything that you have. She is a wealth of experience and information as the elder that she is. <laughs> so next week I have the fabulous Betsy Morse Clark back again. There we had a lot of people wanting to hear her conversation again. We're going to be talking about comparison, joy, and also really leaning into our strengths and how to utilize them to really be more joyful. So that is next week, June 15th, 10 a.m. East Coast and 7 a.m. West Coast. Sam is coming in. Uh, you're two or three hours behind us. Mountain time. Mountain time. Okay. So two hours. But thank you for getting up so early and sharing your brilliance. I really appreciate it. Super fun. All right. Thanks so much. Take care.